supposed to have somebody out here with me. There he is. <laughs> Always late, ain't you? Hello, Daryl. Hello, Mike. Glad to see you. Mike Lee. Daryl Tesmer. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. No, Daryl, this afternoon. That sure don't look like it to me. Close that door back there, will you? See Haley's Comet up there? Yeah, I do. <laughs> there, now it's dark in here. This is the first year we ever, uh, no, second time we ever had it in the afternoon. Yeah, the we first have... time we had it in the afternoon, it scared the death out of everybody that was up here because they could see people all the way back to the door. So we darkened out all the uh, windows so that all they can see is the spotlight in their eyes and they can't see you. You scare them. And now, <laughs> all I can see is Burdell Miners and that ain't much to look at. No, it ain't. <laughs> you said it, I didn't. <laughs> okay, Mike, what do you want to do now? Well, I guess we got some announcements, don't we? All right, uh, we're here on behalf of the uh, Founders Day players uh, named the Melodrama uh, Live and In Color from National Tennessee, the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, no. No opera at the Opry House tonight. Yeah, that's the name of it. Uh, one thing i got to remember, folks, these, uh, Mike and I have been involved in this before, as you probably know, and he took a vacation from it last year and I did this year, but uh, these people put a lot of work into this. I mean, they start practicing already the first Sunday of January, and it's every Sunday afternoon from then on, plus the last couple of weeks, I reckon they've been doing it uh, three times a week. So it's practice, practice, practice. A lot of work goes into it. Yeah, it brings back a lot of memories, though, don't it? Yeah, it kind of does, Mike. <laughs> I got a story I got to tell you. We always wanted to tell people this, and we never have. One year when me and Daryl were in the play, there was a part where he was supposed to uh, run to the door and look out and, and run back and get on the telephone and call the sheriff or somebody, wasn't it? Yep. Okay. Well, anyway, when Daryl run to the side door to look out, I'm not going to say who it was, but two people were back there. One was holding up a blanket, and the other one was mooning Daryl. <laughs> Full moon. He got so shook up, he dialed that telephone about 50 times that night before he could remember his line. <laughs> Do I remember it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we got to get down to some announcements here. First of all, I guess we'd like to introduce uh, the uh, directors of the play. Our, the main director is, uh, I guess you call it main director, and we have an assistant director. So our director is Dolores Mechtel. So is she out here? Or is she <laughs> right now? Up here Now, uh, we usually introduce the uh, Founders Days Committee. Should we do that now, Mike? Or? Nope, nope, nope. Every year we introduce the Founders Day Committee and the officers, and they come up here, and they give this big, long talk, and just bore the heck out of me and out of you, so forget them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's probably all right, because the people that are important in this thing are sitting back here getting nervous, and they're waiting right. to hurry up and get done, so maybe we better hurry up and get done. Let's introduce Millie. Millie Albee, our faithful prompter, has been doing this for, I think, the last six years. Millie, stand up. And <laughs> What's my next line? <laughs> Don't forget Prunella. Oh, who could ever forget Prunella? From started at Deadwood Dix, isn't it, Prunella? Nope. Prunella. Okay, uh, one other thing we want to mention here, I think in this program you see uh, a lot of acknowledgments for people that have contributed in some way, shape, or form to this play. Uh, one thing I did want to mention that uh, there is a person by the name of uh, Helen Klug, if you don't know who Helen Klug is, it's alias Helen King, uh, made the dress that Ann Bauer will be making, so uh, wearing. Wearing. Yeah, wearing. Okay. I, get I hope she ain't making it back there. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, of course, this all leads up to, after the melodrama is done, then we can look forward to Founders Days, which, of course, again, is Father's Day weekend, June 13th through the 15th this, this year. Okay. Well, a little messy stuff. Okay, let's introduce the Founders Days little misses uh, so you know who they are. First, I'll tell you the, the big queens, or the uh, Miss Founders Day queen first. Little Mrs. Wade. Oh, no, they won't. Okay, come on up here, I'll introduce you. Little Mrs. Jenny Reinhardt. Thank you. 
first attendant is Stacy Klug. She's uh, not here today. I understand she's here, right? Uh, second attendant is Anna Schrader. <laughs> and third attendant is Christy Olinger. <laughs> Tell her, don't you have a future? They have a future, definitely. Okay. The queen and her, um, what do you call it? Court. Court, okay. Uh, for Founders Day is Lisa Nelson is the queen, Michelle Pollan is first attendant, Kim Schultz is second attendant, Kara Nielsen is third attendant, and Jody Allen was uh, elected Miss Congeniality. They're not here today. They were last night. Uh, let's give them a hand anyway. They were here next week. I think if people want to do it, and we know this from past experience, if you really enjoy this melodrama, uh, don't forget to tell your friends and neighbors about it because they got next Friday night at 8 o'clock and next and it's coming Saturday night at 8 o'clock and we'll be put on again. Yeah. Okay, we, we got also, wait a minute. Yeah. If there's anybody that ever wants to get involved in this play, either acting or helping in any way, don't be afraid to go to the committee members or one of the cast members and tell them because every year we find it harder and harder and harder to find people to be involved in it. And we don't be afraid to act it. That'll come to you. We can teach you that. Uh, or anything else. Yeah, Verdell, we don't want to listen to you. <laughs> I don't want to listen to you anymore. Oh, okay. Why don't you teach these guys how to move? Yeah, we're going to... Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We're going to do that right now. All right, last night we had a small crowd, but they were really great. This is a melodrama. Melodramas work by audience participation. You got to boo, hiss, cheer everything to keep them going. These guys here like that. When you get involved, they do a better job. Don't throw fruit, throw money. Yeah. <laughs> no. We're going to have a contest, we decided. Daryl always played good guys in these things. For some reason, I always played the bad guy. That's why he's in black. Yeah, that's all I got is black suits from being in these plays. Um, so he's going to go with the Hooray and yeah and cheers and all, all that right. for the good guys. You see the good person coming out there. I mean, this is a guy that's law and order. And, uh, these are the good people. Then you say, yay, now let's hear it. Yay! yay. What? Yay! Oh, there we go. Now you watch. They like bad better. The villain comes out. He's slippery, slimy, and sneaky. All he's trying to do is put the screws to somebody all the time. Now this year we got a villainess. We got a good guy and a good, or a good guy. Uh, well, he's a wimp. They're all guys. <laughs> but anyway, we got a bad guy and a bad girl, and they are mean. So I want you to show this guy up right now. I want to hear boos, real loud boos. Boo! Whoa. Let's have a contest. Let's see how loud you can be, and let's see how loud you can be, and we'll see who wins. On three. One, two, three. Woo! That side's winning. All right, Daryl. You take the hoorays. This side will be yay, and this side will be boo. And let's one last time so we get it going here. Yay, now. All right, on three. One, two, three. Woo! The villain shall overcome. Let's get the show on the road. Thank you. Good morning, dear sister. Good morning, dear brother. 
Well, what's for breakfast? The same as we had for supper. And uh, what was that? The same as we had for lunch. And uh, what was that? Nothing. Alas, I had forgotten. Then music is the only nourishment I crave. Oh, brother dear, will you please give up this insane idea of becoming a composer? A famous composer. It is no disgrace to be penniless and starving. No virtue either. Why tell everyone your name is Billy Bright? When one has a title, letting others pay is quite fashionable. Not me. That is why I've come to this country, to the West, to prove myself as a famous composer in this land of opportunity, and not just as another unemployed baron or duke. You're a count. You're a count on it. I have kept your secret faithfully, even though it has deprived me of romance. For not long ago, in the quaint hamlet of Brewery Gulch, I met a young man in the West who would have made an ideal husband. Our hearts reached out to one another, but alas, my duty to my idealistic brother comes first. Together we have some strength, and separated, we are like chickens in a coop of foxes. Remember, Betty, above all else, I have my pride. We cannot eat pride, brother dear. And besides, if we could, it would be very hard to digest. I have gone frail on the radishes and onions of the field. I shall patronize the free lunch at the Palace Hotel and fill my pockets with delicacies. In your pockets, even the holes have holes. And besides, if you don't buy something, there shall be no lunch. Then they shouldn't call it free. Oh, I thank heaven, dear mama and dear papa, do not live to see the wretched state their children have descended to. There, there, my dear little sister, you must have patience. I'd rather have a sandwich. I have an appointment to see the manager of the Salami Opera Company today. He'll buy my new opera. I feel it. I pray it. Sister, the music box. I told you we would have to pawn it. No need. Last night, while I was pressing your threadbare trousers, I discovered a forgotten coin. It will keep things going for a few days. Alas, this is all we have left of the memories of another life. We've sold or pawned everything else. Replace the top, brother dear, before I dampen this worn carpet with my tears. Oh, Papa, why did you have to be a gambling man? That is all in the past. Trust me, you have nothing to fear. Hey Tis the sheriff! Big Gulch? None other! Are you deep? Dignity and bearing, Betty. Remember, you stay under my protection. I'd rather stand in this hotel room and think that's what Sheriff Big Gulch has come to talk about. Am I a coming in or staying out? Ah, uh, enter, sir. You are welcome. Howdy. 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 That's what I just said. Howdy. 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 Now cut that out. One howdy between the two of you is more than enough. Do sit down, dear sir, and let me take your hat. I'll sit. Believe this hat where it belongs. I feel plumb naked without this sombrero. Now to business. Uh, may I get you some coffee? Do have some. Reckon I could. Much obliged. Oh, that's too bad. Why? There isn't any. Then why'd you offer me a cup? To be polite. Our nation, if you and your brother ain't the strangest critters I ever did meet. My brother's not strange. He's a composer. How do you compose without a piano? I hum. Hum yourself out of this. What is it, brother? We're being evicted. From this tattered hovel? I don't like to do it. But the law's the law. You folks ain't paid no rent in over five months. And seven dollars is seven dollars. But I have an appointment to see the manager of the opera company today. That don't pay no hotel bill. And the manager here wants you out. Uh, a moment, sir. Will this do? Do? For what? Our rent. Missy, you're plumb low 
Bronco. This here's a Confederate dime. Well, you could take the change. I like you, youngins. Even if you are a mite peculiar, ain't nothing I can do. You gotta pay up your rent by the night, or out you go in the morning. Adios. 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 Fret not, Betty. I will save the day. My new opera will come to our rescue. What that it could, hunger gnaws at my heart. You know what I'm going to do if I don't get to see the manager of the opera company today? What? I'll try to see him again tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh brother dear, I think of hunger. <laughs> company carries on with her vocalizing what it sounds like someone's boiling alley cats in hot sauce oh plus that's my name i can't find cindy lou anywhere well she gone out looking for her father miss elma poor little seamstress years ago when she was but a babe an avalanche of snow and ice separated her from her dear dad dad alas she has never given up hope that one fine day they shall be reunited. Consequently, whenever we enter a new town or mining camp, she seeks out news of him. I reckon this hard desert rat opera house is about as low as we've sunk. True, it hasn't the gilt and glitter of the finer opera houses, tish, but it will more than suffice. Tish tash, Miss Elma. Most of the time they use this hard barn for cattle auctions. Where cows have mood, we shall do better. Where you walk, Miss Elma, the sun follows. I Good day know. to you, Miss. Good and day. And you, sir. Howdy, howdy. Could you direct me to the manager of the opera company? 
How handsome he is. What a delightful creature. <laughs> I'm afraid we ain't got no manager. But what we got is a manageress. Manageress? My aunt, Madame Violetta Salami. I am expected. Allow me to present myself. Mr. Billy Bright, F.C. F.C.? Famous composer. <laughs> I've never met a real composer. I mean, a living one. I ain't never met a dead one, either. <laughs> oh, oh, this is our uh, baritone. Bass. And basso profundo. I also sweep up. The name's Clodhopper. Charmed, I'm sure. Well, I can be mighty charming, too, when I want to be. I do believe you, sir. Such manners he has. He makes my girlish heart flutter. Is there a fire somewhere? <laughs> Shucks, that's only Madame Violetta doing her scales. Sounds more like her nails. Oh, quiet. Inform my aunt that Mr. Bright is here. Well, I hope when we open tonight that no one throws a fish at her like last time. You have not yet told me your name. It's Elma. Elma Pumpernickel. Elma. Elma Pumpernickel. That is a very musical name. You don't by any chance of good fortune sing. <clears throat> La, 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 la. I am the prima donna of the Salami Opera. Eureka! What do you mean, sir? My new opera, the leading role, was written for your youthfulness, charm, and beauty. And now, uh, what do you call your opera, sir? Il Pistachio. Il Pistachio. If only I could have a few minutes alone with you before I meet your aunt to go over to score. Not only is he handsome and musical, he has enthusiasm. What do you say, dear lady? Well, as a fellow artist, what can I say, sir? Pray, do not call me sir, call me Billy. Sir Billy? She's pretty, she sings, and she has wit. Watch out, my foolish heart. We have no orchestra, Billy. No orchestra? Well, things have been hard with us, and, and we've had to economize. This is sad news. But there's a musical saw in Claude's broom closet. I'll hum, you pluck. <laughs> there she goes, my future wife, though little does she know it. I have sneaky plans, and I won't carry them out. I never fail because I have carved my career through first-class chiseling. It's not for nothing that I'm called Baron Wolfgang von Wolfpack. Wolfpack! Quiet, Lily. You'll spoil everything. Wolfpack, what are you doing in this miserable backwater of desert rat? There are no pickings here. Do you think I'd have sent for you if there weren't? Who are we going to take this time, Wolfie? Desert Rat is a short supply of widows and orphans. Widows and orphans? Think big, Lily Liver Spot. Think big. I only steal from the rich. Why is that, Wolfpack? Because the poor don't have anything worth stealing. Good point. Come close. In this pitiable Salami Opera Company, there's a sweet young prima donna who's about to inherit a fortune. A fortune? Quiet! I'm sorry, Wolfie. I get a little overexcited when I think of fortunes. Gold mines! Ah. Unfortunately, her father met an untimely end in the Yukon. <laughs> her name? Elma Pumpernickel. That's a name? I must marry her before news reaches her ears or the ears of her aunt, the hag that runs this musical flea circus. Do you know them, Wolfpack? Wherever the company plays, I appear bearing a bouquet of flowers, an ardent admirer of music and beauty. 
And now I'm ready to spring my trap. <laughs> By force? Force? Never! I'm descended from a long line of clever and crafty nobility. And I cherish cleverness and craftiness almost as much as I cherish my noble title, Baron. Oh, you think so much of your title. Why, next to treachery, deceit, and foul play, I value nothing as high. What do you want me to do? I'm not sure. But since I've used your valuable and dishonest services in the past, I'm sure I'll have use of them in the near future. Excellent. Now keep your eyes open. And my ears. But keep your mouth shut. What is that terrible noise? The oxen oh. cows here. Oh. oh, Billy, your music is wonderful. The world must hear it. At this moment, I'm only glad that you have heard it. Your opera must be produced. And you must sing the leading role. Let's shake on it. Oh, how silly of me. Why do you carry that music box around with you? Well, uh, I wasn't going to pawn it if that's what you were thinking. Well, there's no shame in being a poor artist. You're mistaken, Alma. What care I for money? I have more than enough. Poor Bohemian, he too will not admit that he is down on his luck. Among his other charms, I have found pride. Oh, Claude Hopper says I have a visitor, undoubtedly a desert rat music critic, come to hear of my past triumphs. No, Aunt, uh, this is Mr. Bright. Naturally, I no longer possess the voice I did as a young girl, and I've since retired from the stage. Other way around would be more like it. I say a good voice like good wine just ripens with age. So does vinegar. <laughs> oh, I've sung everywhere. London, Rome, Paris. Ladies room at the Union Pacific. Oh, I've been showered with flowers. And mackerel. No, no, Aunt. It, it's not necessary to impress Mr. Bright. He's not a critic. Oh, not a critic. Then, sir, who are you? My card. Billy Bright. F.C. Famous, Famous composer. composer. Oh, he has written the most marvelous opera. He has talent. He has genius. Her eyes flash. Can this all be on account of my music? Oh, and what is the name of your entertainment? Il Pistachio. And it has the most wonderful part in it for me. And I hope I don't have to wear tights in this here one. Oh, exit clock hopper and go sleep out to the ticket for you. Judging from the size of the audience we've been getting, we ought to give the Opry in the ticket booth. Oh, my. Hmm. Not bad. Oh. Not bad. Good. Uh, I could hum it if you'd like. My dear boy, I have the reputation of the Salami Opera Company to consider. I couldn't possibly lend my name and fame to an unknown. But if you would present it for me, I no longer would be an unknown. <laughs> Who ever heard of a living operatic composer? <laughs> That's vulgar. My advice to you, young man, is to forget about your music and, uh, oh, why don't you become a dentist? A, a dentist? dentist. Mm -hmm. There's always work for Dr. Zard. Wait, what if we just make a... <laughs> Poor Bohemian! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just came over from Spring Grove, had a nice long chat with Ole and Lena. They were telling me jokes, many, many jokes. 
When Oli and Lena went to church this morning, they brought their little Lars with. First time for little Lars. So after the service was over, they asked him what, how he liked it, what he thought. He says, I think the music program was okay, but the commercial was way too long. <laughs> also, there was a time when Oli was asked, what you get if you mix prune juice and holy water together? He thought for a long, long time, and he said, well, I think you get a religious movement. <laughs> and also, Oli was asked once about happiness, and Oli says, I never knew what real happiness was until I got married. It was to then it was too late. <laughs> also, he was in business at one time. He had an implement dealer business. And his motto was, we stand behind all our implements, with the exception of the manure spreader. <laughs> also, when Oli when, went into the army, he got a tattoo. And he got his tattoo on his stomach, not his chest. And Carl says, why did you do this on your stomach? And he says, well, I had more room on my stomach. And also, I got a free O. And it's spelled mom. <laughs> also in boot camp, Ole was in, and the sergeant told him, we are going to learn about grenades today. Very important, you have to pay close attention. He says, you take the grenade out and you put it in your left hand, you pull the pin with your right hand, you count to 10, and you throw it very, very far and very fast. So a couple of weeks later out on the battlefield, the sergeant hollered, grenade time! So Ole thought, uh-oh, this is it. He pulled out the grenade from his pocket, put it in his left hand, pulled the pin with his right hand, and proceeded to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, ah. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Boom, boom. Seamstress. Too bad she doesn't have some gold mines. 
to business. Salami Opera was playing in this part of the Arizona Territory, I had no choice but to hurry forth. I trust there is still a chair available for tonight's performance. <laughs> well, if there isn't, you can stand in the wings. Uh, we're all sold out every night. <laughs> <laughs> These, dear lady, were for Elma, but since she isn't here at the moment, do me the honor. Oh, thank you. It reminds me of the old days when my dressing room was filled with flowers and admirers. Oh. oh, and everyone was at my feet. You're speaking of scrub women, of course. Oh, oh, oh my. What? Oh, excuse me. I never was one for pretense. I'll come right to the point. Oh, what point? The salami opera is moldy. Moldy? <laughs> Only last week we were the toast of Liniment Creek. Liniment Creek has a population of five. Two sourdoughs, one burrow, a deaf Comanche, and a talking parrot. How dare you? I'll have you know my family has a turn for music. Organ grinders, if I recall. Oh, oh my secret is out. Oh, 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 oh ruin stares me in the face. That's not ruin, that's the mirror. Oh, that's disaster. It needn't be. Why, what do you mean? Have you mentioned my marriage proposal to Alma yet? Oh, you must remember that my niece is a sweet young thing. The fact has not escaped me. And she only has eyes for men who are young, talented men. A defect in her character, no doubt. I'll overlook it. She has eyes only for her career. Bah! She sings like a schoolgirl. Oh, have you no? Know, I am Elma's teacher. You only prove my point. <gasps> oh, dear Alma, dear, there you are. <laughs> ah, the lovely prima donna. <laughs> it's always a, a pleasure to see you again, Baron Wolfpack. Does the Baron has something to discuss with you, my dear? You mean now? Come, come, Alma. I'm not a demanding man, and life is catching up with me. I want a marriage with a woman I can respect. The words, not of a wise man, but a saint. Sir, I can only marry for love. Did you ever hear such drivel? You marry me, I'll save the salami opera company from ruin. In Denver, I brought you both hothouse orchids. In Cheyenne, I took you both to dine at the finest hotel. At first, we simply thought you were an admirer of music. <laughs> and I want to bring music to the world. She has a fat chance without me and a head to match. <laughs> Tis true, we have fallen on dire times, but marriage! Oh, dear Alma, haven't I always treated you like my very own daughter ever since your father deserted you for the frozen north? True. And haven't always sacrificed my career so that you might have yours upon the stage? Also true. Do you realize we have no money to continue? Desert Rat is the end of the trail. Oh, for shame, for shame. Do you think that those critics 
said I wasn't fit to be considered with the other singers. of my age <laughs> with all my dignity behind me and all my glory spent should be reduced to this that the opera I say for you should be destroyed. Oh, oh, I can see my belief future be with the production. Why not? The name of Wolfpack cannot be linked with any stage venture. What would my ancestors think? Oh. I have an idea. Beginner's luck. Oh. Why don't we find some non-entity to present the new opera? Why, I'd be the perfect non-entity. Water seeking its own level. Il pistachio it is. Oh, 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 dear. There might be some small part in it for me. Oh, dear, let us return to the stage. I have a good boy still. She ought to cultivate it and plant it with potatoes. <laughs> there are a few details I must attend to. About the new opera? No, about the coming nuptials. And, uh, Elma? Yes? May all our problems be operatic ones. Ooh. I'll have those gold lines before the month is out. Marriage? Bah! Little does Elma Pumpernickel know that I already have a wife and two baby daughters I've abandoned without cause. <laughs> this ring James, the moon. Remember, Elma, you're saving the opera. Try to think of it that way. That is a very noble aim. What matters if my heart is breaking? What matters if I love another? I can't let Billy and Salami down. I'm not marrying a man. Not really. I'm marrying a pastor. Dacia! 
How silly of me. You're yeah, pretty silly too. I can never make heads or tails of it. All that screaming and carrying on. Hello, Sidney Lou. Howdy hoody. Is Miss Pumpernickel in? Nope. Uh, when will she return? Your guess is as good as mine. Would you hand these to her and tell her they're from an admirer? Is that uh, Madame Violetta standing over there? No. Nope. It's a lady who wants to buy a cow. Don't forget to deliver the flowers. Good as done. Did my eyes deceive me? Look back. What's this I hear? You're actually going to marry that fat chirper? You're getting weak in that brain, Lily. It's not going to be a real wedding. Oh? I shall merely fake the ceremony. No good, Wolfie. Why not? The only way you can get your hands on those gold mines is to be her legal husband. A real wedding ceremony, a real marriage license. Nonsense. Oh, if anyone got wind that this wedding was fake, why, you'd be left holding the bird. And I don't mean that chirper. No, we can't take any chances. You must marry her. Papers to prove it. There's no other way. Curses. Why? Because you're married already? What's one more marriage to me? Then why can't you marry Alma? She's a commoner. Well, with gold mines, let her be common. No man in my family has ever married a woman without a tail. That's why I was going to fake the nuptials. You'd give up a fortune for the sake of a title? Good grief. If only she had blue blood. Well, give her a transfusion. <laughs> I have the family name to consider. The thought that I should be the first wolf pack to break with tradition grates at my heart. <laughs> you, my friend, do not have a heart. Well, if I had one, it'd be grated like the topping on a taco. Oh, all that gold about to slip through these fingers? No! Never! Listen, Wolfpack, if I solve your problem, what will you give me? There's no way out! I cannot marry Elmo without a title! Wolfpack, read my lips! She's not real estate! She's flesh and blood! You don't understand, Lily! I'm a villain with a sense of family honor. The worst kind. Trust me, I'll solve your problem. If only you could. What, what will you give me? 50%. No, I want at least half. <laughs> it's a deal. Howdy. <coughs> Oh, I hate that barbaric greeting. Uh, you folks know where I can find Miss Biscuit? Biscuit? Uh, maybe it's whole wheat. I got a bad memory for names. Whole wheat? Rye? Rye? Hmm. Swybach? Swybach? Maybe it's Miss Muffin. Are you, sir, by any chance referring to Elma Pumpernickel? <laughs> Pumpernickel, that's it, Pumpernickel. And uh, why, may I ask, do you seek her out? Personal business. Why, you're dressed like a seafaring gentleman. Only fit, that's what I am. Captain Alkalize, the handle, 10-4. Sail clear around the horn. That's why it took me so long to get here with the news. News? About Miss Elma's gold mines in the Yukon. It's come. He reaches Alma for Violetta before we do. We're doomed. Lily, dear. Yes, Wolfie. Would you entertain the captain whilst I endeavor to locate Miss Pumpernickel? Uh, never mind. I'll find her myself. I find men of the sea fascinating. Well, I gotta admit, I find myself pretty fascinating at times, too. <laughs> Coming from the Yukon, you must be very rich. The only gold I seek is the golden horizon when I'm sailing the seas. Oh, uh, I see you have romance in your soul. Did you ever see a sailor who didn't? <laughs> no, maybe Miss Pumpernickel isn't here. 
Uh, never mind. I'll just stick around till she shows up. Oh, but it just might take a long time. I'll wait till night if I have to. Get here! Hey, it's dark in here! Night comes early in Desert Rat, Captain! <laughs> Permission. Because the ways of Europe are not like the ways of America, Claude. But we ain't in Europe. We're in Arizona Territory. Long may she endure. Who? Arizona, of course. Well, Arizona's a he, ain't she? He would break my relative's heart if I married without his blessing. Oh, Claude, please try to understand. 
I'm trying. Of course it's hard denying anything to you, Miss Betty. Then come along. But I, I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. Well, you can wait outside in the street then. But what if this higher relative says no? Oh, Claude, you mustn't go through life building dungeons in the air. How was that again? You mustn't go through life with morose colored glasses. I sure do like the way you talk funny. Come along. I sure wish you'd tell me what you've got in mind. Oh, you worry too much, Wolfie. <laughs> You're getting soft. Baron Fine Wolfpack soft? Never! Why? I'm so mean that when I was once engaged to a girl with a wooden leg, I broke it off. Oh. That's disgusting. Well, what is the one thing you want more than anything else? Those gold mines. They're as good as mine. I mean yours. I mean ours. Villainy is such delight. Ooh. What's to understand? The Baron Secretary explained everything. Miss Liverspot? I don't like that woman. There's something curious about her. Besides, I never knew the Baron had a secretary. What does any of this matter? I must go through with it. For Billy Bright. Yes, for Billy. No sacrifice is too great. He must have his chance. Oh, Ellen. We'll be late, we'll be late. Aren't we gonna be wet at church? Oh, what difference does it make where the wedding takes place? Big dog, too much light no. in the bedroom. Not unless you give me that pistol. Ah, you can have it. 
It's empty. I couldn't afford bullets. <laughs> Besides, never worked anyway. No trigger. Enter Big Gulch. Mr. Mr. Bright. Yes. Mr. Billy Bright. Correct. Sometimes better known as Count on it. Ah, I shan't deny it. Please come in. You must excuse my quarters. It's my royal chamber, also incognito. Very very, very promising. He obviously is in very dire financial straits. Ah, uh, what may I do for you? Uh, help her, really. <laughs> you earlier today at the Opry House. Ah, the woman who wished to purchase a cow. Ah, uh, it's another story of ships that almost passed in the night. Ships? You mean cows, surely. Ah, uh, in checking around, I've discovered you are penniless. Vicious rumor. Oh, come, come now, Count. Not only are you without funds, but you are close to starvation and about to be cast into the streets of Desert Rat. Ha! A far cry from the days I saw you in your fine carriage and pair driving through the streets of Harry Wee Wee. <laughs> Mocked in desert wrath. Oh, I have not come to mock you. I've come to help you. Help? In this envelope, you will find five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? What was that? The maid. Pay no attention. Is this some kind of joke? Oh, I assure you it is not. Surely, I must have to sign something. Quickly, draw up the papers. Well, they're right here. And they're all drawn up. I still can't believe this. <laughs> I represent a very distinguished client. But what's the $500 for? Ah, uh, must be here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, a detail I neglected to mention. What? You'll be married tonight. Congratulations, Monsieur Le Comte. Your benefactor, Baron von Wolfpack. But I don't want to marry him. You mis... <laughs> you misunderstand. I imagine all this is quite confusing to you. To say the least, why must I be married? Don't you think a bachelor can have respectability? Oh, that's not the point. You must marry the one he loves. The one he loves? Don't fret. You won't know who she is. Once the vows are exchanged, you'll have nothing to do with each other. At the end of three weeks, territorial law, the wedding will be annulled, and the lady will have your title. I cannot marry the girl unless her title is above reproach. You qualify admirably. You two are both crazy. Not when I hand over $500. Who was that? The maid. <laughs> Your bride understands that you'll not seek one another out, not even out of curiosity. So why concern yourself? With this money, I could pay all my debts. I could park my heart's treasure album. But most of all, I could honor my family duty and see my little sister happily married. She has sacrificed too much for me already. I will not fail her. I'm not confident this is going to work. He's much too good looking. Need not worry. I already assured Alma that the nobleman is a gigolo and a monster. When she sees him, she'll know it isn't true. Well, you could ask him to wear blindfolds. Let's see. I have it. That dressing screen. Give me a hand. Let's see. I need a chair. Two chairs. I'm bewildered. I'm a wolf pack. Uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am for your appearance. And I for the use of your title. But your title is sterling. <laughs> for us, would be more like it. Best part of his family tree is underground. Uh, is there anything else I can do? Yeah, sit there. 
Ah, but I can't see. No reason for you to see your bride. Uh, I understood I wasn't going to meet her. You mean I ain't even going to get to set eyes on her? No reason to regard marriage as an introduction. What is this place? And who is this count on it? Why, he's paid to marry you and get a divorce in three weeks. That's the kind of man he is. Yeah, if I'd have known about this detail, I never would have agreed to any of this. Oh, don't talk like this. Come back here. Remember, it's not the man you're marrying. It's the opera company I'm saving. Precisely. It's about time you showed up. Oh, I'm here, Wolfie. I'm ready for the wedding. Good heavens, I recognize that voice. Oh, both of you, no peeking. Get over here. Get over here. Oh, my heart. The doctor said those stairs would be the death of me yet. My bride has one foot in Boot Hill. Oh, I can forget about those laundry tubs now. <laughs> she takes in washing. I'm here. Ask me all this and I'm mighty peculiar. So good of you to come, Sheriff. Where be the happy couple? Right here. But uh, the contract and parties is separated. That's part of the contract. The lady is a hypochondriac. Uh, is that anything like a Navajo? No, no. She has a morbid fear of germs. We're wasting time. Great warning toads. You mean I have to marry this couple with a wall between them? Better now than later. Oh, plum refuse. Great. Out of the question. Almost. Dearly beloved, for we are gathering your fat. Faster, faster. Will you, uh, 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 what's uh, her name? Fill it in later. Uh, uh, will you miss, uh, uh, name to be filled in later. Take uh, this ombre. She will, she will. And will you? He will, he will. The ring. It goes to the bride, not the groom, you pumpkin head. That's tradition. Ah! <laughs> Excellent. Now you both understand the arrangements. You will not seek one, uh, one another out, not even out of curiosity. At the end of three weeks, finished. But they didn't sign the marriage. Oh, I know, I know. Later. I now pronounce you man and wife. Not the way I would have liked my marriage to be. But alas, one must be realistic. So now I'm a married man, married to a crone who pants on steps, has a voice like a washboard, and advises me to become a dentist. Brother, you are just too good. Sister, although I am a married man, I love another. Although I have won your happiness and your dowry, my heart is cleft in two. Oh! <gasps> Maybe if I made you mad, if it's something that I might have said, please, please forget the past. The future looks bright ahead. But don't be cruel to a heart that's true. I don't want no other love. Maybe it's just you I'm thinking of. Why should we be apart? I really love you, baby. Close my heart. 
Let's walk up to the preacher and we'll say I do. Show me that you want me and baby I want you. I don't be cruel to a heart that's true. I don't want no other love. Maybe it's just you I'm thinking of. Come morning. And that Baron Wolfpack fella, he's throwing a big fancy party after the performance to honor Miss Alma. Well, I better shake a leg before Madame Violetta catches me dallying. She's all excited too. She's singing in the Opry. If you ask me, that woman sure likes Opry. And that, if you ask me, she's got a one crack mind too. This Eve, El Pistachio Burps. I mean, blooms. But, Billy, why are you so downcast? Is it because you are married and do not wish to be? What must be, must be. I am only sad that I was not allowed in the Opera House to attend the rehearsal. But you will see the performance. True, secreted in the cloakroom. I promised the Baron I would not come near the Opera House. Look who comes! Ah, my wife! We must hurry! Just one moment, famous composer! Crap! What kind of a man are you? You haven't spoken to me in three weeks! Well, I thought it was agreed that we wasn't gonna... Ah, you famous composers are all alike. You're quite mad! I must say, the Baron has peculiar taste in women. Oh. Tonight I triumph! But you're not singing the lead role! You're playing the gypsy hag! Well, what difference does it make? Hag or goddess? I shall be superb! Careful! The bear! Now get this straight, Chief. I want tonight to be an occasion for Miss Pumpernickel. Keep yelling! It'll make her feel good. Bravos cost two bucks a piece. Bravos? I want bravissimos. Yesimos cost extra. Oh, Poppy, I'm so excited. I wish you'd quit taking this opera so seriously. Oh. I want Elma on the train to Denver as soon as the party's over. Oh, tonight I triumph. I've heard it said that your performance must be heard to be depreciated. <laughs> you flatterer. I have but one soaring note. It may open doors. Or bring geese. <laughs> Remember, nothing must go wrong. Oh, gee, one moment. Don't forget about my one soaring note. I'll pay for it myself. <laughs> For <laughs>
your singing is meant to me. Alas, if she knew I was a married man, she would have nothing further to do with me. Oh, Billy, bringing your opera to life has been my greatest happiness. Alas, if he knew I were a married woman, he'd have nothing further to do with me. Murder oh, at the opera house! Sir. Everybody stay back! I'll take care of this! Oh, dear me! Ooh, that critic wasn't here for ten minutes! And he dared write this insult about me? What are you talking about? Listen, in the first scene of Il Pistachio, some member of the chorus must have stepped on an aging super's toe, who emitted what was close to a high B flat, a soaring solo note worthy of a senile Peacock! Oh, how dare he! Everyone knows I was a howling success. You said it. I didn't. Personally, I found it a very moving performance. Oh, oh thank you, Baron. <laughs> Much of the audience moved to the nearest exit. <laughs> All artists must bear the slings and arrows of critics, madame. Yes, that critic, he was a Savage. Oh, he dared to cast nasturtiums upon my talent. Oh, I know. It's got to be something to do with desert rat politics. I know it. In honor of tonight's brilliant performance by Miss Alma Pumpernickel, stuff yourselves at my expense. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be a man of honor. I had to hear my own opera. Forget about your opera. Stay away from our wife. You have my word. You gave me that before. Where Madame Violetta's concerned, you can have my whole vocabulary. Violetta? Who's talking about Violetta? Oh, dear. What you got there? I almost forgot. I forgot to deliver this before the performance. Who is it for? It's for for someone named Countess on it. Zones. Never heard of the woman. Who's the Countess on it? Even though our marriage is unconventional, I could not allow my Countess no gift at all. Consequently, I have sent her the only thing of value that I possess. Ain't no one in town with that name. I'll fetch the lady, Madame Violetta. Give me the box, Cindy Lou. You? I am the Countess Onnit. What? You? Yes, sir. Out of here. Can't be. My head reels. Obviously an expensive gift from the Baron. A music box. One I've seen before. And there's a card. Don't read that card. Dear Countess, though our marriage is most peculiar and you will never know my true identity, you nonetheless were my wife, and I offer this gift as any gentleman, husband of the house of Onnit would do. Billy, it was you! Elma, it was you! I may throw up. <laughs> now look, a bargain's a bargain. We'll pack, get her out of here. Come along, Elma. Willie Liver spots right. A bargain's a bargain. <laughs> True. We cannot go back on our word. Farewell, Alma. Farewell, Billy. Great balls <laughs> of fire. <laughs> it's a man-sized jump 
with me. <laughs> On a tight, whatever it is. Is it an animal or human? Yeah. Probably an opera singer. Then it ain't animal. It ain't, ain't human. It's, it's a seafaring man. What is this? You tell me. I come here to bring Miss Elma Pumpernickel news of her daddy's gold mines in the Yukon, and them two critters hogtied me and blocked me in a storage room. I would have been here sooner. I would have been here sooner, but it took my head three weeks to butt through that door. Is that food? The man is demented! An escaped lunatic! Arrest them, Sheriff! Them yeah. two is kidnapped! I've got my eye on them! I'm Elma Pumpernickel! What news of my father's gold mines? Well, looked like a big strike, Missy, till we had it all assayed proper, and it turned out the whole kit and caboodle was impossible to mine. Impossible? Impossible! If it's impossible to mine, what good is it? Ain't worth nothing? Curses! You're worthless to me now! Take her, me! She's your wife! What he says is true, Billy. I only agreed to marry him to save the opera company. And I only agreed to sell my title to buy him a little sister's happiness. Then you don't want an annulment? Foolish, foolish prima donna. I'll marry you right now. Better not. In the Arizona Territory, we arrest men for bigamy. Uh, oh, that don't sound right where they's concerned. Now that I'm on my way to becoming a famous composer, the future is bright. And I will give up my career to be your faithful wife, always by your side, encouraging and humming. Mm. Happy, happy night. I'm going to have someone to count on, and I have Claude Hopper. What about him? No harm's been done. Look at all the happiness I've brought to Desert Rat. Besides, I'm out $500. He's right in a way. So, if you don't mind, me and Miss Liverspot will slink off. Well, I guess it's all right if no one's going to press charges. Makes my heart glad to see so much happiness. I ain't been a happy man since I was separated from my baby daughter by an avalanche of ice and snow years ago. Oh. Snow and ice? Was her name Cindy? Yep, Cindy Lou. Papa, it's me, you love us. Cindy Lou, honey! Papa! <laughs> oh! Started with gold mines and ended up with mush! Oh! Stop that man! Jones, that can't be! Who are you, lady? That villain's wife! Oh, she who was deserted without cause! Left with these two infant daughters to care for and feed. Unsheltered against the cruelties and adversities of this harsh world. He won't get away this time. The creature can't mean me. Why, I've followed the Ten Commandments all my life. <laughs> Too bad you didn't catch up with them. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have gotten mixed up with a bunch of... <laughs> Singing actors! Put him away where he'll be punished for his wickedness and motherhood will be a bend. It looked like Wolfpack done met his match this time. Captain Alkali, tell me, why was the gold impossible to mine? Because of the oil. Oil! oil. Why, it'd be a plumb shame to pass up the millions and millions you're going to get from them gushers just to scoop up a tiny fortune in gold, and them oil wells ain't never going to stop. Oh, Billy, the opera is safe. Safe? Oh, dear. What? Now that Miss Alma's retired from the stage, who's going to be the new prima donna? We've got to have a prima donna. It ain't natural otherwise. Well, then you folks ought to find one. Are you prima donna? 